come on, my girlfriend's gonna leave me if I don't get these Taylor Swift tickets. Singles in your area, 2-8. Come on, again. 2-8! Okay, let's get started. For the bare metal installation, I've got my Ubuntu installation media plugged in and we are going to hit test or install Ubuntu server. And what's that, what that's going to do is we're going to launch up into the installation screen to configure our operating system. Just in case you've never set up an operating system before, we're going to walk through this together. Um, we're going to hit enter for English and then hit, we're going to hit enter for done. We are installing Ubuntu server, not the minimized version. Uh, you could install the minimized version, but there will be missing commands and we'll have to install like a uh, curl and whatnot. So we're just going to go ahead and hit done. Now this part is very important, so we're going to want to hit up the arrow twice and enter on our network interface, click edit IPv4, uh, enter, go to manual, and for the subnet what we're going to type is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. Now the reason that we've typed that is if you see right there, um, 192.168.0.101 that is the IP address that was given by DHCP and if yours is similar to that you're going to want to type exactly as I did um, basically you're just going to take off whatever numbers are in the final octet of your subnet make it zero and add slash 24 now we're going to decide our IP address for the server. I'm going to give it 192.168.0.85. Gateway is going to be your router. So ours is 0 0.1. For name server, you're going to use 1.1.1.1, 1 .1 .1 .1, comma 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And then we've searched domains blank. Hit save. Done. Proxy address. Ignore. Done. Once you see your reading package list, hit done. Uh, use entire disk. Leave that as it is. Done. Uh, here we're going to click done. Continue. Now this part is where you're going to set up your host name, the name of your user account, and your password. So I'm going to type for name, Cole. Server name, uh, piehole dash YouTube username cool super secret password and hit done we're going to skip for now for Ubuntu Pro hit continue enter uh, install open SSH server this is very important and now we're gonna hit done skip all these we don't need to download anything from there and now your operating system is installing. Now, once the operating system is done installing, we no longer need to be connected to the monitor and we can do everything from our desktop. Okay, now that we're on our desktop, what we need to do is open up a terminal. So once you are in a terminal, we're gonna type in SSH, your username at the IP address of the server we just set up and hit enter. And it's gonna ask for your password. Alrighty, now that we've signed into the server, we're going to type in sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade dash y. Now what this command is going to do is going to search for all available updates for the operating system and then install them with the upgrade and the dash y is for auto approval so you don't have to type y later on. So we're going to hit enter and come back when this is done. Oh, uh... So we're going to, have to type in our password again. All right, we'll be back when this is done. All righty, it looks like the updating is done. Now we're going to type clear to clear out the terminal. All righty, now that we've cleared our terminal, we're going to run this command from the description to install PyHole. Uh, enter. Okay, now that we've installed the PyHole setup script, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. Enter. Uh, hit enter. Let's see. The server waits a static IP address. Continue. We did set up a static IP. Uh, choose an interface. Uh, we're going to go with the default ENS18 and hit enter for select. Uh, do you want to use your current network settings as static address? Yes and OK. Now it's going to ask us for which DNS providers you want to use. We're going to go with Google. Um, Verizon third party list in order to block ads. You can use the suggestions below. 
Um, we're going to hit yes for now and we're going to update those later. Do you install at web admin interface? Yes. Web server is required. Install light. Um, this is going to install the PHP modules to host the admin interface. We're going to hit enter. Uh, we'll enable logging. Um, show everything. Enter. Now it's going to finish up installing PyHole. Okay, now PyHole is done installing. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit OK and ignore the login password it gave us. Hit OK. Now we're going to type PyHole dash A space dash P and hit enter. Now this is going to let us set our own password for the admin page. I'm going to go ahead and set my password. New password set. Now for the second method of setting up PyHole, we're going to be deploying it as a Docker container. Now you may be thinking, oh no, what is a Docker container? Relax, we're gonna go through it together. So I've already gone through the previous steps of setting up a server and SSHing into the server. This one is at IP address uh, 86. Now the first step is the same. We're gonna go ahead and run our updates and it's going to ask for a password and we'll come back when those are complete. All right, now that we've finished updating the server, we're gonna type clear to clear out the terminal. And once we've cleared the terminal, we're gonna run the command to install Docker. Alrighty, now that we've got Docker installed, let's go ahead and make our directory for our Docker compose file. So we're gonna do mkdir-p and slash docker slash pyhole slash compose and hit enter. Um, uh oh, so let's go back and do sudo. Now that we've made our directory, we'll go ahead and navigate to it with cd and then slash docker slash pyhole slash compose, enter. And if we do ls, nothing is here. We'll do nano, oops, sudo nano docker compose dash docker dash compose dot yml, enter. Now that you've created your docker compose dot yml file, we'll just go ahead and grab the docker compose script from the description and paste it in. Now we're going to hit control X, Y, enter. Now that we've created our Docker compose script, we're going to do sudo docker compose, compose up dash D. Okay. Now that we've run our Docker compose script, you can see I've got an error message for failing to bind to port 53. This is easily resolved by disabling and stopping the system D dash resolved service which we're going to do with this command. It should be in the description as well. Enter. Perfect. Now we'll go ahead and do sudo docker pyhole start. No, it's sudo, sudo docker start pyhole. And looks like our pyhole container is running. Okay, now that we've got PyHole running in a Docker container, let's go ahead and sign into that container to update the password. So we're going to run this command, sudo docker exec dash it PyHole space sh. This is going to open up a, sorry, one second, asking for their password. Now what this command does is it opens up a shell within the Docker container. So from here, we're going to do the same command, PyHole dash a dash p, and it's going to allow us to type in our password. Now for the final method of setting up Docker, we're going to be using a Windows environment uh, using Docker Desktop. Now I've already installed Docker Desktop and rebooted my computer. As you can see in the top left, I've just run the exe file. We're going to go ahead and accept the terms and conditions. Uh, and then we're going to use, now we're going to hit finish for use recommended settings. And hit yes for the pop-up. And once you've made it to the main Docker homepage, you're going to go ahead and click on search and type in pyhole and click on pull on the pyhole slash pyhole. What that's going to do is just download all the data for running a pyhole container. And once that's been downloaded, we're going to click on run. Optional settings, uh, we're going to name the container pyhole and then give it port 53. Um, on TCP, 53 on UDP. We're not going to do anything for 67 because we're not going to use DHCP. And then port 80 for the web page. Now for host path, I've gone ahead and made a container on my or a 
I made a folder on my C drive called Docker, and we're going to enter there, type, and make a new folder called PyHole Data. And we're going to put that one there. And for the second one, we're going to make a another one called another folder within the Docker container called PyHole DNS and enter. Open that one. Select folder. Now for container path, we're gonna do Etsy slash pyhole. And for the second volume, we're gonna do Etsy slash DNS mask dot D. For environment variables, we're just gonna do time zone and set the time to ETC slash UTC. Alrighty, now that we've got all of our settings for the Docker container, we're gonna click on run and allow the UAC prompt. Alrighty, now that we've clicked on run for the container, we're gonna click exec, and this is where we can do pyhole-a-p and set up our password. Now that we've gone through all of the methods to deploy pyhole, we're gonna go ahead and enter our dashboard. Now, whether you did the bare metal installation or any of the Docker versions, we will get to the web page the same way. We'll go ahead and enter the IP address of our server running pyhole and then forward slash admin now once you've gotten to the pyhole admin page we're going to go ahead and type in the password that we set earlier now once you've reached your pyhole admin dashboard we're going to go ahead and go to this github page and scroll down to multi pro extended protection and on this first link here within the ad block section we're going to click on the link and just copy this link we're going to go to ad lists Paste that link in and we'll comment, name it GitHub custom links and click on add. Now what we've just done is essentially given Pyhole a list of addresses or domain names to block. So if it sees that you're trying to reach any of those, it's just going to block it and you won't have to see the advertisement. Okay, now I know we've gone through a lot here, but my personal favorite utility within Pyhole is its DNS server. So I'm going to show you guys how to create an A record. Now, if you don't know what an A record is, it's essentially creating a word, like a text version of an IP address. So for this, we're going to go ahead and type in pyhole.cclab.local. Now you can make this anything you want. You can make it home.local. You can just make it pyhole.home. Uh, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to type in the IP address of our pyhole server. Um, we're gonna hit add okay, and that's it now. We've created an a record All right now you may be thinking to yourself Cole, What the heck? It's not working. I'm still seeing ads and I can't reach my server at that domain name uh, That's completely normal. We still need to tell your computer to use the pyhole server as its DNS Now to manually configure your DNS server on a Windows device We're gonna click on the Windows key and R at the same time and type ncpa.cpo enter and this is going to bring you to your network connections, or it's just going to show all of your uh, network interfaces. And we're going to find our active interface, double click on it, click properties, and right there which says IP version 4, or internet protocol version 4, we're going to double click there. And you should be on obtain DNS server automatically. We're going to switch that to use the following DNS server, and type in our IP address of our server. So. 192.168.0.2 and we're going to click OK, OK, close, close that out and then open a command prompt. We're going to do ipconfig slash flush DNS, click enter and now we should be able to go to that domain. Uh, for me it was pyhole.cclab.local slash admin and we're at the admin page. Now to test the ad block function, we're going to go ahead and go to speedtest.net. Okay, now as you can see, I have my ad blocker turned off. and I'm going to go ahead and click refresh and we have no advertisements. Now you may be thinking to yourself, what about all the other devices on my network? I thought this was supposed to be some type of network wide ad blocker. To get Pi-hole working across all devices on your network, we're going to have to update your DHCP server. Now, to figure out what your DHCP server is, we're going to do ipconfig slash all in the command prompt window. 
Now for the purpose of this video, I went ahead and put myself on my ISP router. So as you can see, my default gateway and my DHCP server are the same address. Now what we're going to do is open a web browser and type in the IP address of our default gateway. Mine was 192.168.0.1 and hit enter. Now that we're at our router's login page, we're going to go ahead and type in the admin credentials. Most routers, you can easily find this by typing in the model number or the brand and default password. So I'm going to go ahead and click login. Now that we've made it to our router's homepage, we need to find the DNS settings. So for me, it's going to be in basic DNS. And as you can see, DNS obtain is set to auto. What we're going to want to do is switch that to manual and type in the IP address of our Pi-hole server and click save changes. Now, anytime a device connects to your network, your router is going to reach out to that device and be like, hey, I can do IP addresses for you, but you got to get those IPs translated through Pi-hole. 